back in 2008, I had a Suzuki Swift Sport for six months. I loved it, and I've had a soft spot for Suzuki's little hot hatch ever since. So I should be excited about driving this latest model, but it's slower than the previous one. It's now a hybrid, and it costs more than 21,000 pounds. I'm trepidatious rather than excited then. Before we get stuck in though, have you subscribed to the Car Guru's YouTube channel yet? Go on, tap that subscribe button. My old car was brilliant fun to drive. Inevitably, over the years, the car's basic formula has evolved and the car's grown in size, but being fun to drive should still be the number one objective. At 1,025 kilograms, the Swift Sport is still a very light car, which should help no end. It remains a compact front-wheel drive hot hatch with a manual gearbox, but for the first time, it's got a hybrid powertrain. It isn't a plug-in hybrid, and it doesn't have any electric-only range. Instead, it's a mild hybrid, with a very small battery that powers the starter motor just to help tickle the car along at low speeds to save fuel. The entire hybrid system weighs only 15 kilograms. The engine is a 1.4-litre four-cylinder petrol with a turbocharger. It's carried over from the previous Swift Sport, but stricter emissions regulations have robbed it of some power. It now develops 127 brake horsepower, which is 10 less than the previous version. Suzuki says it'll reach 62 miles per hour in 9.1 seconds. Again, that's about a second slower than the previous model. So the Swift Sport is slower and less powerful than it used to be. However, Suzuki says it's now 6% more fuel efficient, quoting a combined economy figure of 50 miles per gallon. The electric motor also helps to generate more torque low down in the rev range than before. Suzuki tells us it's made the car more exciting to drive, but also more practical in daily use. Apparently, it has tweaked the clutch pedal, the gear shift, the steering wheel, and the seats to put the driver at the heart of the driving experience. That's a direct quote. So often in these small hot hatches, you find a seating position that mounts the driver's seat way too high, so you feel perched on top of the car rather than sat in it. I do still feel slightly too high in this Swift Sport, but it's not terrible. What about the rest of the cabin, cabin quality and so on? Do you know what? It's an affordable hot hatch based on a very basic everyday car, so you should expect scratchy plastics and so on. But the general build quality, the fit and finish, feels pretty good, and some of this switch gear feels lovely and upmarket. Years ago, the Swift Sport was a performance bargain, but nowadays it's really rather pricey. £21,570 puts it up against some very stiff competition, not least a highly specced Ford Fiesta ST. However, the Suzuki does come loaded with equipment as standard. Included in the asking price are six airbags, a DAB radio, Bluetooth, adaptive cruise control, and a parking camera. There are also lots of driver assistance systems, things like lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, and an automatic forward detection system that can detect hazards in the road and bring the car to a complete stop if you've missed them yourself. Now a car like this wouldn't be doing its job if it was annoying to use every day, if it was uncomfortable in normal driving. This Suzuki Swift Sport is neither of those things. The ride, okay, there's a little bit of tension in it, it's slightly taut, but actually it's generally pretty comfortable. Overall refinement is good, it's an easy car to drive, good visibility. You could very happily use this day by day and not really be too aware that it's actually quite a sporty little thing. The normally aspirated four-cylinder engine was a real highlight in my old car. It loved to rev and that suited the car's energetic nature perfectly. This engine it feels quite eager, it's got a good mid-range and lower down in the rev range as well, it pulls quite hard and it seems like it wants to rev out quite keenly but then it gets to about 5,000 RPM and it just seems to run out of energy and it's all done before 6,000 RPM. It's a shame because that's where you want the engine in this sort of car to really come to life but there's plenty of performance, okay, so it's down by 9 or 10 brake horsepower compared to the previous model but you just don't miss it out on the road nor do you crave more power, it's not that type of car meanwhile, manual gear shift, it's really lovely, snicky, direct, nice accurate throw are you ever aware that this is a hybrid? no, never 
more than anything else, the Swift Sport should be fun to drive. It needn't be capable in a very technical sense, but it must be a hoot to chuck along a B-road. And it really, really is. It's such a blast to pedal this thing. And because it's got not too much power, you can really drive the wheels off it without going stupidly fast. It's got a lovely neutral chassis balance. I remember so vividly in my old car, it felt so poised in corners. And if you sharply lifted off the throttle mid-bend, the car would try to oversteer, it'd start to slide. It was fantastic fun. And this thing does much the same. There's plenty of body roll, plenty of movement in the body, but the tires are always pressed hard into the ground, so there's always good, consistent grip. And a really, really bitey nose as well. Just chuck it into a corner, and the front end grips, and you go scooting around the bend. It's such a blast to drive, although the brake pedal is a real weakness. There's two inches of dead travel right at the top of the pedal that do nothing, and then you get very sharp, over-servoed bite. That's slightly frustrating. Pricier, bigger, slower, less powerful, now a hybrid, the Swift Sport has changed a huge amount over the years, but crucially, it is still great to drive. It's also a much more grown-up car in everyday use than the Swift Sport I had all those years ago. It's a more rounded thing, and that probably makes it a better car overall. But at more than £21,000, it's up against some very stiff competition. Ultimately, the new Swift Sport falls just a little short of the class best. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this CarGurus video, please remember to subscribe to our channel. And remember as well to head to cargurus.co.uk, which is where you'll find a great deal on your next used car from a top-rated dealer.